Hi everyone, my name is Lily Beltran and I am a data science student assistant at the Northeast Big Data Innovation Hub. Welcome to the third and last video of the Supervised Machine Learning Artificial Neural Networks video series. If you missed the first two videos, please refer to the NebHub's YouTube channel to watch the previous content. Now we will review multi-layer feedforward networks. This slide briefly explains how we can assemble multiple perceptrons, activation units into multiple layers to build a deep neural network. When we have more than two layers, including output layers, hidden layers, and input layers, it is called a deep network. Each neuron in the first hidden layer takes a weighted sum of the inputs and passes it through an activation function, such as a sigmoid or reloop to produce an output. The output of each neuron in the first hidden layer is passed as input to each neuron in the second hidden layer, and so on until we reach the output layer. The output layer produces a vector of values, each representing the probability of the input belonging to a certain class. The class with the highest probability is chosen as the predicted class for the input. We'll discuss how to train in a generalization of our gradient descent technique in the next module. The sigmoid function is commonly used as an activation function in neural networks. It maps any input to a value between 0 and 1, making it useful for binary classification tasks. The ReLU, also known as Rectified Linear Unit Function, is a simple activation function that returns the input if it is positive and 0 otherwise. It is commonly used in deep learning because it is computationally efficient. Hyperbolic tangent, also known as TAN, is an activation function commonly used in multi-layer networks. It is similar to the sigmoid function, but ranges from negative 1 to 1 instead of 0 to 1. The scikit-learn library provides feedforward networks with various activation functions and can be used for both classification and regression tasks. Let's see an example of how using our companion lecture notebook will train a feedforward network over images of handwritten letters. The MNES data set was used to learn handwritten zip code. Each image gets mapped into a single feature vector. We take the 28 times 28 pixels and reshape into 784 times 1 pixels. This is our feature vector. Now let's see how to use a feedforward network with this. This slide provides a code snippet that shows how to use feedforward neural networks from scikit-learn. The code imports MLP classifier from sklearn.neural underscore network and instantiates an object MLP of MLP classifier with two hidden layers, each with 10 neurons. Then it trains a model on X train and Y train using the, the fit method and predicts the labels of X test using the predict method. I will now introduce the topic of the internals of multi-layer perceptrons, specifically feedforward and backpropagation. This slide explains the backpropagation algorithm for training multi-layer neural networks, which involves the following steps. The first step is to compute the output of every neuron in each layer, also known as a forward pass for each training instance. Then step two is to compute the network output error, which is defined as the difference between desired output and the actual output. In step three, we compute how much each neuron in the previous hidden layer contributed to the error and propagate the error gradient backwards. And this is scaled by each neuron's contribution to the error. And in step four, we perform gradient descent on the connection weights to update them. And this slide shows the weights and edges of a neural network with three outputs and three hidden units along with a bias, resulting in 12 edges with weights. It also shows the weights and the edges for the first layer, which has two inputs along with a bias and three hidden units, resulting in nine edges with weights. The, this process is known as speed forward. This slide explains the process of computing the error and backpropagation in a neural network. 
for the sigmoid function, it shows the formula for computing the derivative of the output of the second layer with respect to its input. And the formula is highlighted here on the right-hand side. Backpropagation is an algorithm used to train neural networks, particularly multilayer perceptrons, also known as MLPs. It involves computing the output of each neuron in a forward pass and then propagating the error backwards through the networks, adjusting the weights with the connections between neurons to reduce the error. The algorithm works by computing the gradient of the error function with respect to the weights of the connections, using the train rule of calculus to propagate the error backwards through the network. In summary, the process of feedforward and backpropagation is used for the remaining instances in the data set and then repeating the process for many epochs. This is a summary of the training process for a multi-layer neural network using feedforward and backpropagation algorithm. Now let's recap feedforward and backpropagation used to train multi-layer networks. After feeding forward the inputs, the network backpropagates according to the contributions from the prior level and performs a gradient descent based on the activation function. We can use the same gradient descent algorithms as previously discussed, such as full gradient descent, mini batch, and stochastic gradient descent. This allows opportunities for parallelism, which we will discuss in MXNet. This slide discusses advanced topics beyond multilayer perceptrons. It mentions two types of advanced neural networks, such as convolutional neural networks and recurrent neural networks. Uh, convolutional neural networks, also known as CNNs, work on overlapping windows of an image to learn commonly occurring higher level shapes as features and then make predictions based on compositions of those features. Recurrent neural networks, also known as RNNs, look for patterns over streams of data and are useful for language models. In this series, we have covered various topics, including logistic regression, gradient descent, and multilayer perceptrons. We thank you very much for joining us throughout the video series and hope to see you next time. Thank you.